This small dinosaur park, in what seems to be the middle of nowhere, marks the entrance to a relatively unknown jewel of Virginia Beach, the Military Aviation Museum. The main museum building houses two floors of static displays, including rare military vehicles, an actual German V-1 pulse jet rocket, a real Enigma machine, a movie theater, a tribute to female pilots, and of course a few historic aircraft. However, there is far more to this museum that makes it one of a kind, and today we will discover the full scope of what this museum offers. I've been invited to meet with a museum spokesman inside the belly of a historic World War II PBY seaplane. Well, thank you for joining me today. Delightful and, to have you here, Brett. Thanks. Let's start out with something, uh, um, the big picture. Can you tell us a, a brief history of the museum? Sure, I'd be glad to. Mr. Jerry Yagan is the owner of the museum. This is unusual in that it is a privately owned museum, oh. open to the public. Jerry's been uh, fascinated with warbirds and flying and a lot of other things since he was a kid. And he started this collection probably a couple of decades ago. It was not an actual museum until 2008, which is when we broke ground here at this museum. In addition to the main museum building, the museum is arranged by hangars, some of which are unique in their own right. Can you tell us a little bit about what a visitor will see in each hangar? Sure. This uh, hangar that we're in now, 65,000 square feet, was the first hangar, and it houses about half of the collection. We're sitting inside what we call the Navy hangar, and the opposite and equal very large hangar is called the Army hangar. But these days, we, we shove airplanes wherever they fit, <laughs> and you'll find Royal Air Force, German, uh, Russian airplanes all over the place. We're a very unusual museum in that you noticed, I'm sure, there are no ropes around any of these exhibits. This isn't like the Smithsonian where you stand 20 feet away from an airplane. You can walk right up to it, take all the pictures you want. There's great lighting. If you're tall enough, you can stick your head inside the cockpit of some of these planes. At what we call the west end of our complex, we have our World War I hangar, which was made to look as much as possible like the kind of buildings the British were building in France during the Great War, and that houses our collection of biplanes and triplanes, including an original 1918 Curtis Jenny, which is almost 100 years old. We've, we've taken the engine out because we thought every 100 years we probably ought to do an overhaul on it, you know, <laughs> whether it needs it or not, but that plane still flies. Uh, we have our fighter factory at the end of the road. That's the building that houses our maintenance and, uh, and work areas where all these planes get annual inspections and have to undergo routine maintenance if we're going to operate them. We have two historic buildings. We have a 1934 hangar from the German Luftwaffe, which was not supposed to exist at the time, where they were secretly training the pilots before World War II. That building was built in Kottbus, Germany in 1934. During the war, it was actually used to produce or assemble Focal Wolf 190 uh, called the Butcher Bird fighter planes. And we disassembled that building several years ago, brought it over here and re-erected it. It still has visible bomb damage from American bombing raids in 1944. Our newest uh, creation uh, that I think will become the most iconic building here is a control tower. Uh, the British were building over 200 airfields in World War II, both for themselves and for the Americans. And and just months after Pearl Harbor, the first British base called Royal Air Force or RAF Gox Hill, uh, that base was the first base turned over the Americans in 1942. We took her control tower down that iconic two-story brick building with the balcony that Gregory Peck and all the other movie stars in Memphis <laughs> Bell and 12 O'Clock High stood on. So you too can go up there and have your Gregory Peck uh, moment because we're almost 95% done with the rebuilding using as much of the original materials as possible. Uh, a World War II control tower. If you had to choose three aircraft that best represent the museum, what three would you choose and why? Wow. <laughs> That's an almost impossible question. I'm going to make it three and a half, okay, because okay. I've got to say the P-51 Mustang. I mean, that's the iconic American war-winning, world-changing fighter plane. But it's not unusual. There's a fair number of them around, so it wouldn't make my top three list in terms of airplanes here. We're sitting in a Catalina PBY. Well, this is exactly the same kind of plane that found the battleship Bismarck in the North Sea, uh, that turned the early uh, war at sea around for the, the British Navy. One of our newest acquisitions is a long-term uh, 
restoration project over in Germany, we have one of only a handful in the world of authentic uh, BF-109, more popularly known as the ME-109, mm -hmm. the predominant fighter plane of the German uh, Air Force, the Luftwaffe, that gave the Allies fits for quite some time in World War II. Uh, ours has uh, just returned to the air within the last year, and it actually has an original Daimler-Benz engine in it. It is the iconic German fighter of World War II and uh, one of only a, a handful flying in the world. The last one would have to be the de Havilland Mosquito, the Wooden Wonder. There's a great video on YouTube uh, for your, your listeners to, to take a look at. It's called the, the Plane That Saved Britain. It's on two parts on YouTube, and it was filmed here in our Mosquito because ours is the only one in the world that still flies routinely. It's, uh, it, you could make a very good case that it was the most important airplane in World War II. It did everything. It became a bomber, it was a fighter plane, and it was an observation plane, it was a cargo plane, it was a reconnaissance plane, it did everything. The aircraft are the main attraction, of course, and they look incredible, but these are no ordinary museum stack displays, are they? I mean, how many of them can fly? Uh, roughly two-thirds of the collection could be made to fly at any time, and there are about two dozen airplanes that we keep in constant readiness to send to shows or to fly for the crowds here. Uh, but at least half of the planes have current annual inspections. Now, there's one thing that really sets this museum apart in my view, and that is the opportunity to, for visitors to actually fly mm. in a biplane. Absolutely. We have two of our open cockpit biplanes, an original World War II era Stearman, uh, Boeing Stearman biplane is what the cadets in the Navy and the Army actually learned to fly in, you know, from the ground up, pardon the bad pun. Uh, you know, they, they learned in what were called primary trainers, and this is a primary trainer. It's got big, fat tires because those kids were bouncing these things off the, the hard concrete runways all day trying to learn basic stick and rudder skills. So both of these planes have two cockpits, one for the instructor and one for the student. The other plane is a WACO. It's a civilian plane, but very much like the Stearman, two wings, open cockpit. You get to smell and hear the roar of the engine in the air going by and the cows mooing and the dogs barking from a thousand feet up and of course here we're we're literally 10 seconds flight from the Atlantic Ocean in one direction and back bay on the intercoastal waterway so it's a beautiful place to go for a 15 or 30 minute flight. I know you're anxious for this one. What's the story with the dinosaurs <laughs> at the entrance? <laughs> um, the owner, Mr. Yegan, was fascinated by many things as a young man and still is. Uh, well, one of those things was dinosaurs. Another one of those things was cars. So when you look around the museum, you'll see some really cool cars, really cool planes, and really cool dinosaurs. Well, I appreciate your time, and thank you very much. Absolutely. It's and a pleasure having you here. Well, thank you. This brief glimpse of the Military Aviation Museum can't possibly duplicate the incredible experience of seeing these historic aircraft up close, hearing their historic stories, or riding in a biplane but I hope I have shown you enough to make this a must-visit destination on your list.